me. What's up? You know, and you know, nothing against uh, Soraka by any means. I've played him before in the past. He's an up-and-comer. He's extremely intelligent. Uh, I think he just needs experience to see what to do in certain situations. And as time goes on, he's going to get more and more of that. But when you talk about experience, you know, Zoo has been it all. He's done it all. He's been in the game, literally. He's been in the game for... How he's long? been a top <laughs> player for so long. You know, I think a lot of people think of, you know, Genesis as his... Uh, Breakout? Uh, I think, you know, that was when a lot of people thought of him coming, uh, you know, doing big things at uh, Genesis 1. But, you know, he's always been extremely solid. So. Yeah. So, do you think Sorako can somehow supplement his lack of experience right now? Or does he just have to Honestly, power through it? He has to power through it. You know, he's not going to catch Zoo with too many uh, low percent KOs or gimps or anything like that. The zoo knows those situations. He knows what you're looking for. He knows your mental game, which is a huge part of it. You know, a lot of people just think, you know, matchups and paper. No, there are people behind that are playing the game, and you have to tap into that as well. That's very true, bro. And I love it. Go straight for the ledge. Yeah, I mean, it was a safe option because uh, Sirak is just throwing out a move. He's just there, chilling on the ledge, just seeing what he's going to do, if he can punish it. He gets to restart the neutral. Yeah. It isn't like, you know... Honestly, I kind of dislike when people talk about the neutral because I feel like the neutral is too superfluous. Uh, honestly, to me, I feel like there are three phases of the neutral. You know, there's offensive neutral, yeah. neutral neutral, and defensive neutral. Okay. And, you know, it's kind of like playing chess. You know, you, you know what phase you're in, and it's just a matter of... Well, you know, is it my turn to switch up from offensive neutral to defensive neutral? Yeah, I still have this advantage. Uh, I'm still trying to, you know, get something big. Or, you know, I'm still being pressured a lot, but I don't want to throw anything out until, you know, I have a clean opportunity to do so. So, you just to so, keep in mind. So eloquently, from Krog. Eh, I feel like right. the neutral, it's so hard to get a grasp on the neutral because neutral in this game ends so quickly. Yeah. You know, you know it's, it's called Marvel Jr. for a reason. Know where to go and okay. Now smooth, I like it. Good Nothing stuff, Sirocco. Got an invincible ledge dash into forward tilt. If you you're know, not aware, that can catch a lot of people. And I really like Zoo's use of the forward air. Not many people use it, but the number of active hitboxes that come out, uh, including, you know, because there's a gap between them, sometimes you catch people sleeping. True. Not very often, but you do. And, uh, you know, it's, it's solid range. You know, it's not just a stack and a hitbox like an air, so. It seems people do forget, do forget about it, but I'm always a fan of anyone who uses every tool your char a character has. Yeah, you know, there is no move that's useless. It's just, is there a right time for it? Exactly. Unless, you know, it's like, Sheik's down B. <laughs> <laughs> but even well, that, even you know, that, we saw that, we saw Ice try and use that. You know, he would rack a lot of damage and then try and go Zelda, get the KOs against, I think, Hungry Box. That, is, that actually is a very smart usage of that. I was just thinking about recovery, but also using it against floatier characters that you would have trouble KOing. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a back air battle with Puff and uh, and Zelda at that point. And in terms of range, Zelda's kind of in there. Meanwhile, Sirocco's already looking a lot better this game. Uh, you know, first game, he didn't look really comfortable until, you know, it was maybe his second to last stock. But here, you know, he's already... He's okay being in Zoo's face. He's okay dealing with that pressure a bit. Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to see him play a bit more defensive. I mean, right there, he tried to throw out an anti-air forward tilt and he got stuffed. He's forgetting, you know, one of the best tools is wave dash backward, man. Reset the spacing, because a lot of people are attacking where you are, not where they think you're going to be. That's true. That's all a part of what I, I like to call micro-spacing, where, mm -hmm. you're, where you're in tight quarters like this. Right. You know. Uh, Zoo earlier jumped over Sorako's jab as he after the forward tilt and allowed him to whiff punish something as small and quick as a jab. So, you know, it, I think, you know, as time goes on and players develop that, I think other characters will, you know, once they figure out, you know, solid whiff setups and whatnot, just to make someone miss, you know, I think a lot of characters will step up, you know, a bit of their metagame with that. True. And there Speaking of town B. B down tilt, and this is perfect for Zoo because he's going to get a free punish if Sirocco, and he does. Oh, but nothing off of it. Okay. He tried to go really, really ham there with the land on the platform. Uh, shine. Yeah. Shine, yeah. It would have been 
huge damage, but not quite. The stock is gone, and Sirocco's keeping it close, man. I think you're, you're right. He looks a lot more comfortable. Oh, what One. a strong three-piece com three combo by Zoo. Sheik, Sheik lost their stock at like 50, around 50%. I think it's like 49%. 49, right? But, you know, Zoo just picked the right move, had the right follow-up, uh, just predicting DI, and was able to get some more off of it. Oh, Ooh. my God. Ooh.